Lesson 14, page 62, in our Wisdom Walks Bible is called Opportunity Knocks. Wisdom Walks Principle, guard yourself because temptation lurks. And here's a quote from Chuck Swindell. Chuck Swindell, it says, God promises he won't allow temptation to push us into an inescapable corner. All right, so I'm going to talk to us tonight about guarding ourselves against temptation, fighting against temptation, being wise, using our time wisely. So what I want to do for the opening is I'm going to have one wrestler that's really confident, thinks nobody can take them down. They're going to be defending, and the other guys are going to take their turns to get a takedown. If you get a takedown, you're going to stay in, and you're going to become defense, and the guy that gets taken down is on the mat. But everybody else, while the guys are wrestling, you guys can stay like arms like the park so you don't get run into. But I want you guys to try to distract the crap out of the guy doing defense. Really distract him, really get his like mind off of wrestling to try to get him to get taken down easier. Does that make sense? All right, who wants to be the person doing the defense? You wanna do it, buddy? All right, you got it, buddy, come on. All right. All right, who wants to go for the takedown first? Anybody, man, come on up, anybody. Don't be shy, man. Well, you can't wrestle, right? Well, I don't want you to hurt yourself if you're still injured. You can ask them, yeah. But I don't want you to get injured. Anybody else want to try it, guys? Yeah, oh, you can. Are you going to take a forfeit? Does anyone want to try it? Anybody? Yeah, let's go, man, come on. around They're Noah, try to, to scare him, him distract him, to him. Smitty's trying to take him down. They're trying to distract the crap out of you so you can't get taken, so you can't. Stand around, guys, come on, get him, get him, get him, get him, Shane. Yeah. Down right behind him, so Smitty can push him. What's his name? What's his name? That's Noah. Noah, all right, so you yell Noah really loud, get his way, like, try to stay hard, take a part, take a room, and just distract him. All right, y'all ready? Press him. Let's go, Noah, come on now, come on, Noah, come on, Noah. Come on now. Can you get a takedown or what? Can you get a takedown or what? I'll go control with your feet. Come on, man. You go for it, man. We're helping you out. Uh, there you go. You got it, too. All right. Now, you're in. Anybody else want to go get you? You want to try it? Here's what you are. Right, he wants to go get Yeah, but you got to go get the distractor. I don't want to beat the guy on defense. Oh. Is that it? Yeah, that was it. All right, guys. So, okay. I'm going to go back to the Wisdom Walks book, page 62. So... No, how hard was that to defend the takedown with everybody distracting you like that? A little more challenging, right? Okay. So I wanted to kind of go through that. Satan likes to tempt us. Satan likes to distract us to get us on the wrong path. We have to stay focused and keep our eyes on Jesus, no matter what distractions come our way. All right, so I'll read through this Opportunity Knox lesson here. So we all know what it means to be at the right place at the right time. Each of us has stories about when opportunity came knocking. I heard the knock when I was drafted to play professional lacrosse after graduating from college. Looking back on it, I was simply at the right place at the right time. The conditions were perfect. The team needed my abilities and the coach liked my style of play. I probably wouldn't have made any other team in the league, but I was at the right place at the right time so I seize the opportunity. Over time, I've learned that there are good opportunities and there are bad opportunities. Just like you can be at the right place at the right time, you can also be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Unfortunately, I found myself opening the door to some of these too, haven't you? Those times when you say to yourself, how did I get myself into this mess? What just happened? I sure didn't plan on this. Even now, I have a knot in my stomach thinking back on some of the bad opportunities that sprang out of nowhere. Sometimes I simply wasn't cautious enough or smart enough to say no. 
I find comfort, though, in knowing I'm not the first person to fall for a bad opportunity. I've seen some good company from way back. King David, the man after God's own heart, experienced this kind of opportunity, and he chose unwisely. When all the other kings went off to battle, David stayed home. His decision to ignore his responsibility to go to war with his troops gave rise to a bad opportunity. David was at the wrong place at the right time. If he'd been doing what he was supposed to be doing, there was a good chance he wouldn't have sinned or fallen. When you're doing what you're supposed to do, the seemingly endless responsibilities, appointments, meetings, and daily routines offer you many sin safeguards. So when we're using our time wisely and staying focused, we're less likely to turn to sin because we're staying focused on doing the right things. By going through these time-consuming and relatively mundane motions, you're protected from a host of opportunities to sin. It's when you float by in life, like David did, that the bad opportunities raise their ugly heads. Bad opportunities always come when your guard is down. Satan loves to surprise and ambush you. And he's really, really good at it. But that doesn't mean you have to fall for the bad opportunities. And this is God talking in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. This is God giving a warning. He says this, If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. So God uses this picture here where he says sin is crouching at the door. When you go to get a takedown in wrestling, are you at a better chance of getting a takedown like this? Or when you're in an athletic position? A much better chance of getting in an athletic position. Satan is like that. Satan is crouching at the door, ready to take us down, ready to tempt us to cause us to sin. So we have to always be alert and ready. And I'm going to go over the armor of God in a second to help us stay alert. So if you don't use your free time wisely, there can be great temptation to sin. Mindless channel surfing gives rises, rise to hundreds of opportunities to see stuff you didn't want to see. Spend several hours on the internet and you'll discover sites you had no intention of visiting. You might not even have been looking for bad opportunities, but they popped up there on the screen. Don't go looking for trouble, protect yourself against it. So as God said to Cain, sin is crouching at the door. Crouching means waiting for the perfect opportunity to spring. So what can you do? You can be on guard. You can build in safeguards, such as what Billy Graham did. He refused to be alone with another woman other than his wife and used time wisely instead of wasting it. If you're fulfilled and satisfied with your life and the way it's going, you'll be less likely to jump at a bad opportunity. Before you open the door of opportunity, you'd be wise to take a good long look at it through the peephole first. All right, let's look at the livet on the next page. So it says here, have you ever been surprised by a bad opportunity? What happened as a result and tell the story. So I got one example for me back when I was a kid. I think I was in middle school, uh, middle high school-ish when this happened. My friends in the trailer park got me to smoke marijuana one night. So they led me to break the law and do drugs. And they also led me to fight somebody. And I think I told you guys that story where they led me to get in a fight with somebody and I did the wrong thing. And then later on he joined the wrestling team and I pinned him over and over and over the right way. So those friends led me to do the wrong thing. So I was in the wrong place at the right time. That's why he talked about choosing our friends wisely in other lessons. When do you find yourself drawn into bad opportunities? Is there a pattern you can identify that could help you spot such opportunities in the future? And I put here for us, it says, who you hang around is who you'll become. I had no wisdom to choose wiser friends. So I chose the people I hung out with and who you hang out with is who you become. You're going to wind up doing what they do, acting like them. So another lesson says here, in what areas of your life might be a bad opportunity to be crouching at your door right now? Be specific about the potential temptation. Why would this particular temptation be difficult for you to turn down, explain? I put different things here that, that you know kids might be struggling with. Peer pressure to drugs, people trying to lead them astray with those. Some people in your class might claim to be your friends, but they might want to lead you to try to break some school rules or disrespect the teacher. So you have to stay close to Christ and do the right thing. 
disrespecting teacher principal. So those are different things that I put in there that when we choose our friends, we can have friends that can lead us to that or people that lead us away from that. God calls us to get to people that lead us away from that. All right, let's look at the maximize it. Before you act on an opportunity, talk through with a trusted mentor. Is this a good opportunity, a bad one? How can you tell and what will you use to figure it out? And I put here, pray and look for Bible verses on it. Does it glorify God? 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, whether you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. So every action you make, it's to bring honor to Jesus. And you can think of that. Would Jesus sit here and do this thing with me? Would Jesus sit here and watch this TV show with me? Would Jesus sit here and listen to this song with me? Would he do this activity with me? If he would do it with you, then it's something you can do. If you think Jesus wouldn't hang out with me and do this, then it's not the right thing. So God breaks it down pretty easy for us with that verse. Anything that glorifies or honors God, we can do. All right, tell a trusted friend about the bad opportunity crouching at your door right now. Brainstorm how you can keep yourself out of harm's way, both in this situation and in future ones. Pray together, asking God to give you strength to master the temptation. And the next part says, discuss how you can be intentional. That means think about it. Think about what to do, about the opportunity you choose. What safeguards, what guards, what blocks, what defenses can you put into your life? How can you keep bad opportunities outside your door rather than inside where they can go and create harm? All right, let's look at some scriptures. I'm going to give you guys the story of Judas from the Bible, and he had a lot of opportunities that came his way, and he chose a bad opportunity. So let's look at Matthew 26, 14 to 16, page 25. All right, Matthew 26, 14 to 16, page 25. And then we'll read a little bit more from verses 47 to 56 to kind of get the context of it. All right, page 25 in our Wrestler Bible. Matthew 26, let's do 14 through 16 first. So page 25, Matthew 26, 14 through 16. Big 26, little number 14. It says at the top, Judas agrees to betray Jesus. All right, everybody good? Everybody got it? All right, it says here, then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him thirty pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Look at that key word, opportunity. Satan likes to put opportunities in our path. God also puts opportunities in our path. Satan put that opportunity in Judas' path to betray Jesus, and Judas was led astray, and he betrayed Jesus. So Satan likes to come, come at us with opportunities. But God also does, so pay attention to God's voice and not Satan's voice. All right, let's look at 47 through 56 on the very next page to get more context of the story. 47 through 56. It says, Jesus is betrayed and arrested. So just turn one page over. Little number 47. And even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. Judas said, this is gonna be the sign, guys. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi. That word means teacher. He's mocking Jesus right now. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, my friend. Jesus called him friend, by the way, but that's another, another story. Jesus called Judas friend, even when he betrayed him. That's how loving Jesus is. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slaves, slashing off his ear. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. 
Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us, and he would send them instantly? But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? Then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. So Jesus struck on the opportunity that Satan brought to him, and he was led astray. All right, let's go to James 1, 13 through 17, page 198. Page 198 in the rest of the Bible. James 1, 13 through 17. Whenever we're tempted to do the wrong thing, whenever we're led the wrong way, we get the thought that leads us to do the wrong thing. God shows us here in this verse, he reminds us that God never tempts us. It's always Satan that tempts us. So we'll read this verse here. 13 through 17, James 1, on page 198. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires. When in, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. So when we're tempted, Satan tempts us, and our own thoughts tempt us when we're not close to God, but God never tempts us. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, just seven pages over, page 205, 205. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9 on page 205. Stay alert! Did I scare you? Did I scare you? Good. The verse says stay alert. God's warning us here to always stay alert because Satan is always trying to tempt us. It says stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. So God always calls us to be alert. Remember, sin is crouching at the door. Satan is crouching trying to tempt us. Let's look at a couple more scriptures, and I'm going to show you guys something. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 through 14, page 144. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 through 14, page 144. It's at the top right of the page. This teaches, teaches us about being humble, not getting prideful. So it says in verse 12, If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. So if you think, oh, I've got this. You know, I can handle all this temptation. I'm never going to sin. I'm perfect. I've got all this. I can handle all this by myself. God warns us. He says, if you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. And the temptation in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. So God promises us in this verse, every time we're tempted, and God's done it for me, when you are tempted by something, God says, I always provide a way of escape. So he always shows you the right way to go, but you have to choose to take it. Verse 14, so my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. And that word flee is important. God's saying run from that. Run from the worship of idols. That's any other God besides the God of the Bible. That's idols, created gods. All right, I'm going to have Coach Vaughn come help me with this one. And if you guys want to turn with me, turn with me to page 166 in your wrestler Bible. And I'm going to show you guys, I have my wrestler uniform on. I have my singlet and my headgear. And Coach Vaughn is going to read through the verses and stop at each one. And I'm going to show you what God showed me with the wrestling uniform, how it shows us what the full armor of God is.
All right, so I'm on page 166, Ephesians 6. We're going to start verse 13. Coach. All right, so it says, Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. All right, so before you start your wrestling match, we always have our singlet kind of wrapped around like this. This is the belt of truth. Notice how the first piece of armor you put on is the belt of truth. God calls us to always build our foundation on truth. If we start any war against the devil and we're not doing it in truth, we're going to fall. We have to build our life on the truth. That's the first piece of the armor is the belt of truth. All right? And the body of the body armor of God's righteousness. All right, so we have to put our straps up to begin the match. So the body armor of God's righteousness comes forth. This is where we're protected from some of the attacks from the enemy. We'll keep going, right. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. So I've got my wrestling shoes on. That translation says fully prepared. Some translations say ready. When I go to wrestle, if I'm standing up just like this and I'm flat footed, am I ready? Am I prepared? Am I fully prepared to wrestle? So God calls us to have feet that are ready, that are fully prepared. I'm light on my feet and I'm ready to go. I've got feet prepared and fully ready. Go ahead. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. All right. When we're wrestling, if I reach, my enemy is going to shoot on me immediately. So this is my shield of faith. My arm that stays down to protect my lead leg. My shield of faith is intact. All right, coach. All right. And then verse 17. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the right. spirit. Good, coach. So this is my helmet of salvation. So the helmet of salvation, God's word cleanses my mind and he protects my mind with his helmet of salvation. It's a helmet. It protects my mind. Satan loves to attack people in their mind. God wants to put his word in our mind so we can fight the devil with it. And the sword of the spirit, which is the right. word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and that is my attack hand. So when I'm wrestling, I've got everything ready. I've got my shield of faith. I've got my sword of the spirit. I'm attacking. I've got my helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. I started with the belt of truth, and I'm ready to go. So God showed me that the full armor of God is in the wrestling uniform, and God calls us to use those principles spiritually. So I wanted to give you guys a visual picture of it. John 10, 9, page 87. It's going to be Jesus talking. All right, John 10, 9, page 87 says this. Jesus says, yes, I am the gate. Sometimes it says door. Think of a door for this one because we're talking about opportunity knocking at the door. Jesus said, yes, I am the gate or the door. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. There's a scripture that relates to that on page 219. Let me show you that one with it. Page 219, Revelation 320. This is Jesus talking as well. Page 219, Revelation 320. Jesus says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. So Jesus said he is the door and he said he stands at the door and knocks. Remember that verse that God warned us about earlier where it says sin is crouching at the door. Satan is, is seeking to tempt you and devour you, but you must rule over him. So Jesus said, I'm the door 
and I'm at the door knocking as well, we have to choose which way to go. Christ says, choose me, go through me. Don't go through the devil. All right, let's look at Galatians 5.16 will be the last scripture and then I'll pray for us. Galatians 5.16 on page 161. All right, Galatians 5.16, page 161. It says here, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Other translations say, walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. What God's saying here is, when you walk in faith, when you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to walk in sin, you're not going to be led to sin, you're not going to be... You're not going to be given to the power of sin. You're going to be given to the power of the Holy Spirit. So God calls us to let the Holy Spirit lead our lives and not sin. All right, so let me pray for us. Father, I ask for the wisdom to discern the difference between good and bad opportunities. When bad opportunities arise, your word says we must be prepared and stand firm. I do not want to fall or stumble. I do not want to be deceived. So please, Lord, order our footsteps. May our time and schedule be glorifying to you or honoring to you. Let us not waste our time in activities that would open the door to unwise opportunities. Today, with your help, I choose to keep sin outside the door. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, we'll see you guys Tuesday.